So, um, I get out of jail. I go stay with my friend Isaac over at 51st, near Maynard. Um, or, like, almost exactly there. And uh, behind that gas station there. Um, I was looking for apartments. So I finally found one at the Grove. We'll talk about the Grove later. But, uh, uh, the little black kid that I'd seen that was friends with Jason Barriente, so we're from 3 and one at Studio 6, all of a sudden walking by. I didn't recognize him at first. This was in a few days of getting out of jail, I believe. And, like, he asked me for a cigarette. I didn't recognize him at first because he wasn't, like, looking directly at me. He was kind of walking by. And I was like, let me see your ID because I don't want to be giving, like, a minor, like, a cigarette. <laughs> and, uh, I think I was walk at Walking Max or coming back from the gas station. I was thinking I was Walking Max coming back to the apartment going into the building and uh he was like i was a your idea and i get closer and i start my face so it starts to be like oh it's that kid and this isn't these aren't these locations aren't like close by each other they're not super far apart within driving distance but you can have a car um and uh he was like oh it's you and then later then i was like screw you <laughs> and, I, and i just like blew him off and I went and I was smoking out in the balcony and he was still walking around. He's like, do you know anyone that like wants like a note four? I have a note four that I'm looking to get into. Not a note seven, but a note four. And I was like, no, dude. And he's like, I don't know. I didn't have anything to do with like what was going on over there at Studio Six. Well, then why did you mention it? If you didn't, so you have information that you're not willing to share with me? Um, that's just as bad. <laughs> um, pretty much. <laughs> and he had done other things at the thing so he he's definitely knows someone that's part of this group or knows someone that knows you know someone part of the group he didn't magically just appear there i'm sure it could be a coincidence i don't want to seem paranoid so technically there is a chance that that was a pure coincidence that right after getting out of jail months after seeing this person that they just pop up acting all sarcastic to see me like oh it's you i think i can understand like someone being super facetious you know super sarcastic it was pretty obvious and yeah, that's an interpretation, but it was super obvious. <laughs> and throwing the whole like phone thing and the whole thing, I didn't have anything to do with the thing. I'm not, if I didn't have anything to do with it, I should know about it. If I do know about it, I should share that with you. I should share that information with the authorities too. Especially since they're a terrorist group going around town fucking with people and your name is going to be listed in a bunch of other names. <laughs> like an example. <laughs> My husband like values. They love it when I do that. Of, of names of people that help this group, whether or not you knew to the fullest extent what they're capable of and what they actually do, you knew they're fucking with people. And I'm sorry if it was the police officers. I mean, I'm not sorry, but like, if they leaned on you, I mean, there's maybe mitigating circumstances, but you should, it only takes one of you to speak up for, the, for this whole case to come crumbling down. And none of you are speaking up. And it's like utterly ridiculous. So I got the apartment at the Grove. And when I was moving to the Grove, uh, uh, my storage place is uh, uh, off of uh, 183 south of Techno Ridge Drive, which is south of MLK. And, uh, uh, and there's a storage place there. There's the only storage place around there. And um, I was moving, and like there's these houses behind it that have like roosters and, and chickens. And it sounded like the chickens were going like, Check your Facebook! Check your Facebook! And I was like, Oh, that's weird. Like I knew they weren't saying that, but I was like, I, you know, I'd heard them. I was like, again, but I was like, how does that work? Is it bouncing off their throats? Or are they literally like talking like chickens, like, check your Facebook, and just doing that? Or is it like, I'm hearing that, and I'm hearing them, and it's just like, the brain like, puts it on top of each other. Like it does with air conditioning, condensing systems, and car cars as they drive by. Not every car, but certain cars. So it's interesting. It's like, how do they make it sound like it's coming from that car, not that car? Is it bouncing off the car? Like, initially, we call them Pac-Man cars because initially I started hearing like video game music at the Grove. Um, and we call them Pac-Man cars. It was a reference to that and a reference to the movie Pixels that I had recently seen. And they had the Pac-Man cars. And so we just called them Pac-Man cars. Because I was like, they made me think that they were, well, these, the sketchy caravan, the, the doom is real. And that these people were part of like the sort of like uh, onion link tour, like secret group that was like fucking people and going around and like, on the radios or on apps and stuff and like and like talking into them and like causing like the, the words that were coming out to be like it was a whole group of people like on some sort of like chat like an IRC like chat channel um, and then they got the information or they got the links to it through a tour site 
or they watched it through a torch light. They watched the videos of the torch light. And then when I heard the audio sounding much louder and sounding like it was coming from these cars passing by, um, it's just really dangerous. And that's when you start writing license plate numbers down. And when like, you become suspicious and paranoid. Um, <clears throat> another expert mate of mine who's still going through this at a, to a lesser degree, he is writing li li license plates down. And it's like, you're going through the same thing I was going through. And it's like, yeah, I was paranoid, like for good reason. <laughs> and it's like, what if it was coming from that car? Eventually I was like, eventually maybe I'll get the same license plates again, you know, thinking rationally and logically. I wasn't like, I'm going to find this license plate, I'm gonna this person, and I'm going to go hunt them down and hurt them. No, <laughs> it was like, I'm going to write down and log it. Write this one down and log it. Maybe eventually I'll see the same license plates pop up over and over again. Um, especially when I was hotel hopping and moving around at different places. Well, that's very tedious and it's like very unsuccessful but it's like you feel like you have to do it because if you don't it's like you might be missing an opportunity to catch these people so the grove off of manshack not the great grove neighborhood off of 51st street near isaacs but um the grove off of manshack 7704 i believe or is it 04? Um, I'd never lived in South Austin before. The further south of Austin I've lived was 18th and Vodka. Um, I told you about the Pac-Man cars a little bit. Um, they kept on with the harassment. Um, early on at the Grove, like one time, they had me hypnotized with this story. And they told me a story about how, like, one friend of mine and some other person, like, they told me a story about, like, how he killed his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend's parents and, like, and she killed his, maybe. Or they were already gone. And that he, as Mikey, like an ex-roommate of mine, or just as the name Mikey, but not Micah, <laughs> um, uh, who I believe is a victim of this as well, um, like, had killed my father, but he killed him in like 1970-something, and they were telling me the story, and that was only a small part of it, and I was like, what? And then they, my eyes felt like this pressure, like I was, like, they were trying to make me cry or whatever against it, like this blast of pressure, and it made me feel really weird, but then they tried to make me seem like, like the APD was coming in, To have, um, to have all the fun sex or whatever. And, like, all, and they're like, hey, there's, hey, give um, so-and-so from the APDs here and they want to come in and pimp you out. They want to come in and they want to like, um, like get high or, or, just, or, 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 or they want to pimp you out or whatever. And it's like, fuck yeah, all right. <laughs> okay with me, I guess. <laughs> if it's mutual. And they're like, no, Kip. And they did this in the voice of Christine Bavelka. I mean, Christine, I'm so sorry, but you have no idea. Like, I heard your voice at the beginning of the Grove when they started creating the soundboard. And I heard your voice being sent to me through Voice of Skull technology, which has been around for over 50 years. And they used your voice along with so many other people's voices from Capital Credit Union and EMDs and ESCAN slash TransUnion and from my life as well. Um, but yours, well, your voice was used like a motherfucker <laughs> and you were in my Facebook friends list I need to add you back but they used your voice and they used your voice in a very nasty way they um they, they were like no kid the APD does not offer pimping out as a service and it's like well I didn't take the term literally and if I, and I wouldn't care if it was literally either if it's like something they're into then something they're into I don't really give a shit I'm very open <laughs> I don't need I don't need money that way but <laughs> Uh, it's more about the whole like experience, right? <laughs> and they're like, Kip, so and so from the L and they kept going in loops through these stories. Like, so and so from the LAPD is here. They want to pimp you out. And it's like, um, and then I went, no, because pimping out would be illegal. And like, that's not something that the police officially provide as a service to the community. And they're like, no, no, Kip. And Christine Bavelka's voice, <laughs> no, no, Kip, this is the LAPD. And I was like, oh, all right. <sighs> no, Kip. The LAPD does also not offer sexual services like that, just like the APD does not offer services like that. I'm like, oh, fuck you, motherfuckers. <laughs> I don't know if I have time for this, but um, another thing that they used Christine Pavelka's voice. Christine, they made use, they made, they used your voice to talk to me, and um, in a soundboard voice. And you must have a lot of videos online, or they must have been in your life, or without you knowing it, perhaps. But. Um, I was walking Max one time, they were like, we're going to plant a meth pipe in your bushes and call the cops and they're going to come and they're going to get you arrested. And I was like, it made me nervous. I come around the corner with Max seconds after they're telling this and this girl from a few doors down, this sketchy girl who was walking with another girl, she dips down and looks like she's dropping something in my bushes. I can't foretell the future. You know, I didn't know that was going to happen. Whether or not that, that woman was aware of them or not, I think she was, but who knows? I'm not a paranoid person. She might have not been. 